so let me start with the hypothetical story there is an absolutely empty road ahead of us with trees on either side and both of us you and i have decided to compete in a race a race lagayenge bhai kis mein cycle mein okay on our bicycles okay so we start off very well and then we've acquired some very good speed let's say 25 30 km per hour and all of a sudden a monkey jumps from a tree what will you do sir my natural instincts are going to take over i'll turn my handle slightly and i'll break with as much effort as i can the moment you do that you will fall down and then skid for the next 2 to 3 meters okay and when you skid some portion of your body will be injured what will happen is some portion of your body let's say forearm or shoulder comes into contact with the ground okay it grazes it rubs against it and then portion of your skin will scrape off what do you think is the exact reason this has happened sir the reason is friction if there is less friction less injury if there is more friction more injury sir the road surface the surface of the road is very very rough and that has caused injury so you are talking about friction as a disadvantage my counter question is if there is less friction on the road let me pour some oil on the road will you be able to run your bicycle on it will you be able to run bikes or cars or trucks on it no sir so friction can be a disadvantage because it is causing you an injury but friction at the same time can be an advantage and it is this concept of friction that we humans <clears throat> over the past 5200 years have really taken advantage of we have taken advantage in the form of uh, this i'll talk about it in the form of this okay what what is this sir this is a flat belt we can see but where does friction come into the picture i'll be talking about it don't worry okay this is going to be a very very elementary class and i'm sure this is going to help you appreciate why friction is very important and how we mechanical engineers can take advantage of it and build equipments based on this concept let me talk about first of all this example and by the way this is what you call the heart of the car sir what is the meaning of heart of the car google it you will find it okay and write down in the comments uh, this is fine and by the way what's happening over here you can see that <clears throat> there is a shaft over here there is a shaft and on to the shaft this this pulley has been connected right so this is going to rotate in this direction okay then this way then the belt is going to be going into this direction this way clockwise again here we go then the belt goes this way this way clockwise again upwards anti clockwise and this way what do you see is that power is being transmitted from shaft 1 to shaft 2 to, to shaft 3 then to shaft 4 then to shaft 5 all of this is beautifully synchronized right you can find tune it and all of this has happened because of very one important mechanical device which is popularly known as a belt it is because of this belt we been able to transmit power from 1 to 2 2 to 3 and so okay so the idea of belt is very important for us mechanical engineers and we are going to explore this very very uh, deeply in today's session let me give you some more examples what do you think is happening over here sir there seems to be some kind of motor and this motor is connected to a machine we can see that right this machine has got some primary work to do but the most important thing is that the power from the motor is being transmitted to the machine and that is very important this power is only transmitted because of the bell drive over here right and we are going to explore the complete mechanics of this bell drive and to be very honest if you watch carefully take a look at this figure what is this sir uh, it looks like a drum okay and above the drum we've placed a belt black color belt and what we'll do is we are going to pull this belt with our hands let's call this t2 right uh, this obviously is going to be the tighter side of the belt sir then obviously over here this is going to be the lighter side we are going to call it the slack side we are going to call it tension t2 we will try to develop a relation between the tighter side 
and the slack side which happens to be t2 by t1 e to the power mu beta we are going to be discussing it in detail don't worry okay everything will be discussed secondly if you watch the point of contact starts over here and the point of contact ends somewhere here this angle over here is what is referred to as beta and we call it angle of contact remember this the contact that the belt makes with this drum over here okay the angle that it makes at this point is the angle of contact right so shall we begin we surely can take a look at this let me run the animation i made this initially on autocad okay what is this the one in cyan color is the belt and this yellow color is the drum we've placed the belt over the drum okay let me okay this is the angle of contact watch this is the angle of contact the contact starts somewhere here and it ends somewhere here you can see the portions okay sir but why are we showing you these things let me have a front view of this and then we can understand this in a much better fashion what we want to do is we want to apply sufficient force over here so that motion impends somewhere along this direction okay we want to apply sufficient force over here obviously this is going to become the tighter side so that the motion will impend to the left how much is that minimum force this is something that we are interested in okay so now this angle is beta as i told you before let me consider a very small element a small small portion of the belt somewhere here okay at an angle theta the small element is subtending an angle of d theta okay so we understood this let me get back to my original position once again let me start this the entire belt starts from this particular point and ends somewhere here this is the angle of contact angle subtended at this center point beta in the same fashion if you consider a very small portion of the belt it is going to subtend a very small angle which we are going to call as d theta so at an angle theta the small element subtends d theta fair enough now let us take a look at this element only. very well sir we want to zoom in here we go just take a look this entire angle d theta we can divide this into two equal parts so i've done d theta over 2 and d theta over 2 done very easy now if you keep something on the ground the ground applies normal force or normal reaction to it so there is going to be a reaction from the drum onto the very small portion of the belt since the portion is very small the normal reaction also is going to be very small that is dn secondly sir we know that the motion impends along this direction this is impending motion to the left so friction mu n or mu dn will be to the right watch okay let me show this to you once again here we go this is impending motion to the left friction to the right mu dn done sir very well there is a tighter slide and there is a slacker side over here we have the slack side let's call the tension onto this portion of the belt right hand side portion as t if the angle over here is d theta by 2 again the angle over here also is going to be d theta by 2 very very simple geometric case second over to this side the tension will be slightly higher right because of this much length of the belt or the element so here the tension will be t plus dt now you know very well the basic idea of mechanics is that we have to resolve the forces into components into horizontal and vertical components what we'll do is we'll do t cos and t sine always remember in front of the angle you see the sine component t sine d theta by 2 and over here you are going to have the cos component t cos d theta by 2 similar is the case over here okay in front of the angle you put the sine component and over here you have the cos component done now the mechanics begins let's go for summation fx0 we just want to know we just want to know about that force that force t2 which is good enough for motion to impend along this very direction it is this force that we are interested in fair enough now let's begin the analysis summation fx0 sir this is left hand side negative 
this is mu d n sir right hand side positive t cos d theta by 2 right hand side positive let me write it down <coughs> done the analysis is going to become very easy okay it was the built up that is a bit difficult to understand so if you watch this this element is extremely small so the angle is also very small so for small angles when theta tends to 0 cos theta tends to 1 it is this logic that we are going to apply okay as d theta by is very small d theta by 2 is going to be even smaller so cos of d theta by 2 will be equal to 1 let me put 1 over here the equation simplifies done now t and t will cancel each other out what's left is this and we are going to call it as equation number 1 that is the first thing now let's apply summation f y is equal to 0 d n sir is upwards positive these two forces t sine d theta by 2 and this over here downwards negative let me write them down again over here we are to apply the same logic when theta sir tends to 0 in that case sine theta will be or can be written as theta it is this logic we are going to apply over here watch okay and you have to multiply t with sine d theta by 2 and dt with sine d theta by 2 here d theta, dt and d theta will be multiplied so two small quantities when multiplied will even create a sm smaller quantity that means when you multiply 0 0.2 with 0 0.4 it will make an even smaller quantity 0 0.08 okay some, some something of that kind so d theta into dt will be zero when you apply this logic over here the equation reduces to this much you can simplify it and you are going to get the value as this is zero by the way okay the multiplication of two extremely small quantities the equation simplifies to dn equals to t d theta and this is our equation number two let me write down both the equations okay let me start with equation number one you have to plug in the value of dn and dn happens to be t d theta we are, which we are going to put in over here the moment i do that this is what you get now watch let me simplify let me take t over to the right hand side so dt over t so will be equal to mu d theta okay so this was all about the element as far as the entire belt is concerned you need to integrate look when integrating there are two variables one is in terms of the tension while the other is in terms of theta let me go back to that original figure okay so theta is going to vary from 0 to beta whereas the tension is going to start from t1 and it is going to end at t2 so for theta 0 to beta for tension t1 to t2 let us apply and here we go t1 to t2 0 to beta solve this is natural log okay then you can plug in the limits ln t2 minus ln t1 this is the same as ln a minus ln b this is equal to ln a over b okay ln by the way is the natural log simplified and you also know that log of a base b is equal to c then you can write a is equal to b raised to the power c right in that same fashion first of all let me write this in a much more familiar term okay so t2 by t1 is going to be equal to e raised to mu beta this is the relationship that we wanted to derive i hope all of you've got this okay and uh, in the next lecture we are going to be solving a numerical to apply whatever we've learned till now i hope this is clear to everyone if you've got any doubts or queries to write them down in the comment section Thank you very much. This is Manas Patnaik signing off. Take care.